Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations, and in this video, I want to show you all a way to wrap this style of shell. This isn't an auger shell. I'll try to look it up and figure out how to pronounce it, but they're just it's such a cute little spirally shell um they're very easily accessible i have the links to all the tools and materials down below and you can make this wrap as simplistic or as complicated as you'd like so let's get started so the tools that we'll be using in this tutorial are wire snips round nose pliers bent nose pliers and nylon jaw pliers as well as a ring mandrel would come in super handy like a gradiated not ring mandrel, but just a little mandrel like this. And again, like I mentioned before, there'll be a list of all the different tools and materials down below. And now these, the wire gauges you choose and the bead size you choose are going to be very dependent on the size of the shell that you're wrapping. Um, this is a smaller shell comparatively. Um, so I decided to go with a 20 gauge and a 28 gauge copper core um, silver plated wire and the brand that I use in all of my work is Parawire. They're absolutely phenomenal, good prices, excellent product, like every color you can imagine. Um, and then they also sell uh, silver filled and like um, bare copper too. But if I were using a larger shell, I would go with an 18 gauge and a 26 gauge um, is my own personal preference. But by all means, please feel free to experiment and kind of try out different wire sizes. Um, and then also the bead that I chose, this is an 8mm opalite bead. I want something that fits right there in that nook of the shell. Um, so if you had a larger cell, shell, go with a larger bead. If you had a smaller shell, smaller bead. Um, but just for my purposes, just a nice little round one. And a freshwater pearl would look super pretty. Um, any kind of like Swarovski crystal might be nice like just you know again use your artistic preference um I'm going to be pulling off oh, about two feet of the wire I save all of my little bits of um scrap wire so I try to give myself a little bit more tail than what I need because I'd rather have room to experiment and then trim it and use it as scrap later than to have, you know only trim off like 10 inches and be very very limited in what I'm doing and by working with the enameled copper it gives me I feel the freedom to do that without feeling like oh my god I'm wasting this you know pure silver wire or gold filled or something you know and I'm just gonna cut off two sections And then I'm going to be using a full arm span of the 28 gauge. So I'm off camera, but I just pull it right off of the spool. And then I'm going to trim. And we're going to begin here by, let me zoom in a bit more for you guys. Wrapping, just getting, holding the tail down in my thumb. And then just doing coils around the thicker wire and then I'm going to train that little tail part down and you could do a variety of different weaves um, around your wire in this part just you know to suit again your style your taste and what you're going for I'm using my bent nose pliers to kind of smush that little tail down and I'm going to give myself about half an inch. <laughs> there we are. And then kind of squish it down with your fingernails. Sorry if I deviate off camera at all. <laughs> and then from here, I'm going to scooch this down quite a ways down my wire. Like almost back down to the other end. And I'm going to add in my second wire. And now from here, you can see the way that the wire is wrapping around it. I'm going to wrap twice around both. And if I remember to, I'll be putting a link somewhere up on the screen, um, taking you to a much more in-depth uh, tutorial on how to do this wrapping style. But I feel like it's a perfect um maybe first project if you're being very ambitious or at least something to kind of bring yourself beyond just doing coils 
So I've got two wraps around the two wires and now I'm going to do five wraps around the one. And you could do just two and two. Like you could change this ratio. I like doing two wraps because it makes it look much more solid. But um, you could do three or, you know, uh, however dense you have, you want the um, pattern to be, just do fewer wraps in between. So there's four. And there's five. And then I'm going to do two. There's one. Getting my wire all tangled up. And sometimes you just have to be patient with yourself. The wire is going to get tangled. That's just part of it. But just be patient with yourself. Be patient with the project. So there's two wraps. And so now I'm going to do this for oh, a good bit of the wire. Um, I'm probably going to start with like... Yeah, like seven inches, um, five to seven inches of this, um, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a little bale up at the top, and then I'm going to be following the corkscrew pattern down of our shell. So I'm going to get a good bit woven, and then we'll meet you all right back here. So I've used up almost all of the full arm span of the wire, the thinner wire that we had picked out. So now before finishing it off, I want to get a little bit of um, wrapping done. And you can see I actually moved it quite close to the end, so I still have all of this wire, um, probably more than half that I pulled off, just kind of off to the side. I'm going to use the second segment in, which I think is like a six, possibly a six or eight millimeter. Um, part of the mandrel. You could use whatever thickness that you like. And I'm only going to do, oh, I'll go ahead and do the double wrap. <laughs> so here we go. Excuse me, since I sniffle my nose. And I'm bringing, you can see this one here is the one with the coils on it. That's the one that I'm going to bring around the neck of this piece. So I actually think I'm going to cross them like that so that I can more easily wrap this coiled piece around the neck. Sorry, didn't mean to go off camera, but I just uh, trying to get the wire to go where I want it to. Okay, so you can see now I'm going to move, remove the mandrel. You can see how that's wrapped around the neck and that acts to stabilize our bale that I'm not going to put my fingernails in there and kind of spread it apart just a bit. It gives us a really nice little shape. So from here, I'm actually going to snip this, give myself about an inch of length. Oh, well that wire fell on the floor, but I'll retrieve it later for scrap wire. And now I'm going to use my round nose pliers, just spiral down a little bit. And this is going to seem odd, but what I'm going to do with this is I'm actually going to insert it into the cavity of the shell. Because I feel like it gives me just a little bit of stability that might otherwise not be there. And it's going to be covered here in a minute anyhow. So from there, we have our little stabilizing spiral and you could actually look at the way that the shell spirals comes in and down that way so we could actually um try to insert this into the uh i'd have had to have spun it around the other way but we can try to feed it down the way that the shell grows like that just kind of hook it through and that I feel like gives it a much more stable, you know, also a nice little stable base. So now I'm going to be taking this top part, or this wire that we wove, and I'm just going to start following down 
and it didn't get us very far at all <laughs> so um yeah you can see that only got us like one little rotation i wanted to do at least three maybe a fourth rotation now granted that used up the bale used up a good bit of our weaving um but that's all right it just it gives us an idea so now we can come in and continue wrapping two rotations around two excuse me and then five rotations one two three four five and then two rotations around two And now I'm just going to do three, because this little bit of wire is getting really hard for me to grip with just my hands. One, two, three. And then I'm going to trim it. Tuck that tail with my uh, bent nose pliers. And now I'm just going to actually work off the spool because I'm not sure how much it will take. And what I mean by that is I've pulled off wire, but I'm not snipping it off of the spool. And I'm just gonna go one, two. Oops, if I can show you. You can see just two, two and a half rotations. And I'm gonna get in here with my wire snips and trim that tail quite short. Tuck it all together. And now I'm gonna push that boop and pretend like it never happened and then I'm going to wrap the one wire around both there's one and two and that's really gonna want to slip around on us but that's okay we'll figure it out two, there we are then one two three four and that's a way to just kind of quick and messy but you still can't quite tell that it happened um, way to splice in more wire <clears throat> and now I'm going to continue just wrapping this with the shell the shell actually gives me a little bit of something to hold on to too um, I'm just going to continue wrapping this two three four five until I've gotten as far down the shell as I would like. Um, I've done some pieces like this where I've just wrapped all the way down the shell to the tip. Um, it's entirely up to you. Three, four, five. But I think what I'm going to do is do a little bit more on camera with you guys. One, two. <laughs> I mean, it's nothing if not re repetitive. Four, five. And then we can actually just bring it around a bit more and you can kind of wrap as you go to gauge how much you went happening so see how that's starting to kind of come along so I'm gonna unwrap just a bit to so give me some room to get the wire in there one two don't be afraid to split it a bit. And this really lends itself to so many different wrapping patterns. Um, you could incorporate beads. Two, three, four, five. You don't have to limit yourself to only two core wires. You could use three. Again, I think that would be more suited for possibly a larger shell. But uh, it's, you know, you do you. <laughs> There's no wrong way to do this. So if you like the way that it looks, then it's correct. One, two, and if they're kind of, you know, spread apart like that, you can push them together with your fingernail or with your pliers. I'm very fortunate to have long, strong fingernails that I can use to just push everything into spot. Four, five, one, two, and so you can see it really does just build on itself and as we start coming around. And so now from here, I actually think, oh, what am I going to do? Uh, I'm going to move this around so that we're wrapping around this one wire. And I'm going to coil a whole bunch. Three, five, 
size. And you can see it's very spread out, but we can fix that by just pulling it in and then kind of cinching to tighten it down. But I'm going to make a nice little court, like a little spiral right there. Excuse me. And really, there's no sense in me counting this. I just do that out of habit. Now I am going to trim. Gave myself roughly a little over a hand's length of wire to work with. Because I may want to stitch this in later. You think that's probably, yeah, that's probably plenty. So now I'm going to trim this wire just a few millimeters past where we stopped coiling. Snip. Use my petite round nose pliers. You can see these ones have a very tiny tip, especially compared to these. You can compare the size of the two. So these ones are much smaller, and they allow me to get a much smaller little spiral. So I'm just gripping as close to the tip of the wire and as close to the tip of the pliers as I can. I'm just bringing that around. And so now you can see this extra wire that we left hanging down. I can actually whoop, kind of bring around the back side and stabilize this spiral to two, three, four, five, to this wire. And there's no sense in counting, I'm just going to spiral this, <laughs> you know, wrap it around the uh, core wire all the way. Push it down, cinch it to make up for any slack. And I really like the way that that looks. But, and I'm trying to keep that centered up with the center line of the pendant. So as the tail gets shorter and shorter, I start just twisting it down like this. Just being careful that I don't backtrack and lay it over where I've already wrapped. Okay, and now from here, I want to do just a bit more. Again, off the spool. But to splice this in, I'm coming in and laying my new wire in between a few wraps back, however many as you'd like. And then just wrapping it in a way that it falls in between our previously laid wire. And then whenever I get to the end of where I'd been wrapping, I just go ahead and smoosh, get that all smooshed together. Try to sense that down best I can. Then I'm going to come in with my bent nose pliers and cinch and twist around. There we go. Smoosh, smoosh, smoosh. <laughs> there we go. And just wrap in some more. And don't worry if you don't feel like you're not very good at the uh, wrapping part. You'll get lots of practice. Because <laughs> that's practice makes progress, you guys. The more you do it, the more you constructively criticize your own work. Like, don't look at something and be like, oh, I hate it. You know, look at it and be like, what could I do better? You know, if you, and then, you know, that way you can identify why you don't like it, and then you can work on that thing that makes you not like it, and then next time you'll like it that much better. And also keep in mind, especially if you're creating with the intent of selling, just because something's not your vision of perfect, even as the creator, just because it's not your vision of perfect, someone may see it and be like, oh my, that's, that's, that's perfect and buy it from you and then you can buy more beads or pay your bills or eat or you know so um 
try to not have such a critical eye on your own work. It's not everybody has the same taste and style and stuff. So, okay, so now from here, we're coming around. Oop, I bypassed it just a little bit. So I'm going to undo a few coils. Doo, doo, doo. And this is the perfect spot to demonstrate my favorite tool, my nylon jaw plotters. I'm just going to grip and stretch it a bit and then get it in there and just straighten that out. Now, I mean, it'll never be perfect again, but it really helps <laughs> uh, kind of calm it down. So now I'm going to be coming in from behind, maybe? I'm just going to do one stabilizing stitch. But I'm just pulling that through. And this way our little spiral won't get snagged on anything. Just pull it tight, that way it nestles in between the wires that were already there. And then we get to start coiling again. There we go. You just push that down into your fingernails. I'm going to try to make it look like there's no gap. I don't know if I can. There we go. So that's quite subtle. I mean, you can tell if you look, but it's not like, bam, right there in your face. And I'm just going to continue coiling this around. Coil, coil, coil. And bring in this up to here. Coil, coil, coil. Like I said, you'll get a lot of practice at this. And I think, oh, what do we want to do? Hmm. <laughs> I never quite know how to finish off my pieces. Um, if I'd given myself a little bit more wire, I'd have done another little spiral. But we didn't make it. So, let's see. Sorry, that's my thinking noise. So I'm just going to bring it, leave a little bit of a tail there, grab my uh, round nose pliers and just leave that spiral wherever it ends up. Oh, that's super cute. <laughs> it's just, I feel kind of almost in the wrong spot, if there is a such thing. Um. So I think I'm actually going to scooch this up to the side here, because again, I want to stabilize it. So I'm just kind of pushing the wire in between, if I can, the previously coiled wire in the shell. Come here, bent nose pliers. These can be super helpful for this purpose. Oh, and it just doesn't want to go. Hmm. So I think what we'll do is I'm just going to snip that, use my bent nose pliers to bring that down. I mean, we could leave it there, but I'd worry that it would snag and kind of pull away. I mean, and it doesn't seem to a whole lot, but I'd really like it to be a nice tight connection. So again, ooh, we've got this bit of scrap right here. You can see. And now I can try to feed it through where there might be some space. There we go. Just like that. And sorry, the heater just turned on. <laughs> and then. Uh, yeah, there we go. It's just wrapped around the two. And so now I'm going to come up in here, try to feed it through again if I can. Even with this tiny, tight little 28 gauge wire, it's kind of hard to get these to fit through. So I'm going to grab my smaller bent nose pliers, see if I can, there we are. Just pull it through, oops, stabilize it. So for this side, I'm coming through. 
Oh, go away, little bug. How are there bugs? It's 20 degrees outside. <laughs> Look, seriously, there's a gnat flying around in the dead of winter. Ah, there it goes. Right, so we got some new house plants from the store, and I think they might have had some gnats in them. Okay, so that is not particularly the most gorgeous thing I've ever done, but I bet you, if I never point it out, <laughs> most people won't notice. But it is enough to stabilize and get that um, to where it's not going to snag on your clothes or in your hair or something, at least not too badly. So I'm snipping it. And I left quite a bit of tail because I want to be able to come in and tuck it in even further around. There we are. There we go. Get the little dog hairs off of it. And so that's how we've grounded that out. I feel like it looks a little naked down here. Hmm. Okay, so that's a way that we could do it, or we can change our mind and snip it, <laughs> because we're artists and we get to do that, and just remove the extra wire. There we go. Get all the little bits kind of out of the way, smoosh it back down. I'm putting the spiral down here. I want it underneath the other one. But it's a little too large. Like if I spiral it in, and we can just use our fingers for this, I'm afraid it'll be quite large. This is another spot where your nylon draw pliers are just perfect. Yeah, I'd like a smaller spiral than that. So I'm going to uncoil it. And there's nothing wrong with changing your mind, you guys, whenever you're doing a project like this. Like, change it, I mean, a million times. It's not, I just don't overwork your wire until it breaks, but you can always, also these shells are pretty easy to get, and they all more or less are shaped the same. So you could, you know, something that you don't like about this project, you could do completely different in another one, until you do find what you like. Okay, so you can see I trimmed some off, I removed just a little bit of that coiling. And now I'm going to come back in in my pile of pliers and start spiraling again. There we are. Okay. Yeah, I like that a lot better. Because <laughs> they look, I don't know, they're kind of like little spirally waves. And since that's st stabilized right up there, I'm not so worried either about it coming off. And it's, it's on there. And that wire right there keeps it from twisting up and out. But now we run into, I'm going to move this stuff over. I'm going to pull off another arm span of the 28 gauge wire. I could be bumping it up to a 26. Uh, the smaller the number, the thicker the wire. Um, could be bumping it up to a 26, but I have the 28 out. So we'll just do with that. So now I'm at the end of the wire that's still attached to the pendant and I'm just going to start doing some coils training that tail down Okay, no pokey bits. And I'm going to coil just a little bit more. I want about half an inch. A little over a centimeter, so there we are. And I'm going to pull this down to where it butts up to our work that we left off. Mm, and I think, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm going to bring it back down to the tip and I'm going to coil about that much more. Mm 
Because what I'd like to do here is bring this down. I want to have enough to go around the perimeter of this stone because I'm going to take on this 28 gauge wire our 8 millimeter bead just thread it on like that and then I'm going to start bringing it up and around And now how it's looped through there and this is now I'm really glad that I decided to stay with the 28 gauge because I want to come around I'm going to bend this out away from our piece so we can see a little better the wires on this side I'm going to push it over and insert from the other side so I'm basically stitching this little bead on but this is going to make it super duper secure. I mean, unless somebody comes at you with some wire snips or something. Okay. And then as we tighten it down, there we go. See how it just slid in, in between those coils? <clears throat> And I'm going to continue coiling now around this wire. Which gets a little difficult. If you don't want to have to, um, let me zoom out, if you don't want to have to mess around with all of this wire, you can just kind of wrap it up on itself like you're spooling it. There we go. And now from here, that gives us, we don't have nearly as much wire to have to fumble around. There we are. And you can just push it down and keep going. And there we are. And so now from here, we can continue this spiral, like this little loop of metal, down and around, and it makes it look quite seamless. Well, I mean, if you know what you're looking for, but still, it's, it's not like a bunch of jaggedy loose ends, which a lot of my work sometimes has, which I wanted to kind of get away from that. Because it's... I really enjoy trying what I'm not good at, <laughs> you know, things that I haven't done before because it, it really pushes my creativity, my problem solving, you know, things like that, keeps it fresh. It's never boring if you're challenged. It might be frustrating, but it's never boring. <laughs> and honestly, I'd rather be frustrated than bored, so, because <laughs> it's so rewarding whenever you do figure it out and coil, coil, coil. <laughs> There we go. Okay, so we've gotten a good bit more coiled around. And I'm going to keep coiling. <laughs> the nice thing about this style of piece, too, is um, it's not necessarily technically challenging. It's a, I mean, you're not weaving together... Uh, you know 20 base wires with three weaving wires and adding in different beads and you're know, doing an intricate knot work pattern or something But it is repetitive. It's going to help you refine these basic techniques And it's going to let you explore your creativity in a way that's hopefully rewarding <laughs> So again, I want to ground this down To our uh our piece so as we've come across here let me zoom in a bit you can see this wires coming through I'm just gonna wrap around the neck of this piece 
this is the head and this is the body this is the neck and I'm just sliding through right there on the back side because I do want it to be a little less than obvious if I can help it and just that one wire to stabilize but now it's a lot less likely to get pulled away and coil 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 now I am actually going to coil the rest of this arm span of wire that I had snipped and I'll meet you all right back here so here, I've actually got a nice little trick that makes coiling a lot easier um, sometimes. Uh, it takes a little bit of practice maybe, but let me zoom out so you can capture the full effect. Um, we have our wire with the coiling on it, and I'm just <laughs> taking it and going like this. Um, <laughs> I don't know, it's fun. <laughs> doo, doo, doo. But yeah, and it just makes nice tight little coils. Um, so this is what we have so far. So I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to train it down along inline, or do I want to do some spirals up here? I think I want to do some spirals up at the top. I was going to train it down and like double up, you know, this kind of layering, but I feel like it looks kind of naked and empty right there. So let me zoom in a bit. And I'm just going to, sorry, I'm getting all my hands in the way. So I've got this, my hands twisted up. I'm actually going to zoom back out. So you can see, and I'm just putting my fingertip on there and then twisting. And you can see that gave me a really nice tight little curl, curly cue kind of, in the wire. It's a little farther back than what I wanted, but we can work with that. So now just building up and around. That little spiral there. And then... Oh, I'm going to keep coiling around this. There we go. Training that down. Now, I wanted this to come around and have enough to do another little bead right there. So let me trim off some more wire and find probably a six and yet yeah, a six and maybe even a four millimeter wire and I'll uh, bead rather uh, and I'll meet you guys right back here. So here you can see I've spliced in some more wire and I want to join this one to that one. Like this wire to that one so i'm going to do just a few more one, a few more coils let's just get that couple going and then smush it down and then cinch it there we go and now from here i'm going to actually do a bit of a figure eight and what i mean by that is instead of coming around the top you know, which I guess I could do just as easy as anything. I was thinking about coming up and around from below and trying to hide it. So I think I'm going to do that just because we haven't done that in this tutorial yet. There we go. Just sliding that through. Uh, I treat a lot of my wire wrapping very much like I'm hand sewing. Um, coils or whip stitches kind of filling in space it's almost a bit like embroidery maybe I don't know <laughs> but um it's far less particular I am at least far less particular about where things are going so long as they look good or rather look the way I want them to so there you can see it's not quite as tucked in between the wires as I would have liked so I might be able to Maybe just strong arm it into a different position. Two, three, four, five. 
And so now I'm preparing to place a six millimeter bead right there, same manner and fashion that we did on this one. So to do that, I am going to, sorry, coiling in the end of this so it stops tangling on my weaving wire, and just spinning this to get a lot more coiling done with less movement of this hand. Pushing that around. I think that's ready. So now I'm going to sit this down and I'm going to thread on our six millimeter opalite bead. Have that follow the wire down. <clears throat> and now I'm going to carefully bend this around. And it would stabilize to right there, but I need to pull this away from what I'm doing a bit to make room to feed this down through the other side of the wire. There it goes. I'm just pulling that through as nice and snug as we can without making any problems for ourselves, hopefully. It's a weird little bump in the wire, so I'm going to try to smooth that out if I can. There we go. And now I'm just going to keep coiling around like that never happened. <laughs> there we go. Lots and lots of coiling for sure. And I don't know if I want another little spirally loop like that. Or if I think, yeah, I'm going to have it coil around. See, and I, I, this is why I like giving myself a lot of wire to work with. It's like I might have not have had the option to have added in all these nice little bits. Sorry. Let me wink, our guinea pig. Uh is uh burrowing and tunneling in her in her box we're cleaning out our cage so if you hear a bunch of little scratching noises that's lemmy winks so just coiling push wrap and push into place and now i believe i'm going to come down into the wrap about Maybe. I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just making it up. <laughs> All I know is I'm having fun and that's what's important. So there we go. Yeah! I'm going to coil it around and start feeding it down this way. So, I'm going to continue coiling the length of this, and then I'll meet you all right back here. So, I've coiled quite a bit more, and now I'm following, again, this little groove in the shell. And I want to keep everything lined up. So, instead of just twisting it as tight as I can, I want to keep these spirals down here lined up with our bail. So, I'm kind of twisting that into place, and then grounding it with my thumb and twisting around there we go and you can actually see i twist it around until it meets up over here let me double check and make sure everything's yeah pretty much pretty much centered and so now i'm going to with our 28 gauge wire try really hard it's probably going to be easier to feed in through the front but to thread in between don't think that's going to happen um 
Maybe I can slide in between right here. Nope. Okay. <laughs> well, I was going to try to stabilize it to this wire in a way that's subtle. Uh, but I guess I'll just be messy about it. So instead of sneaking into the weave, I'm just hooking behind both the wires. Making sure I don't kink my wire. And, um... Just tucking around behind like this. Oh, we got a little bit of a kink in it. That'll be alright. Again, I really want this nice and stabilized. And so from there, we've got that one stabilizing wire. And I'm just going to continue coiling. Like this. pushing it up and I can follow it down for a ways yeah lots of coiling though <laughs> but man I love the way it looks just There we are. And it's still not quite staying as in line as I would like. And we can experiment here. Would I like the way it looked if it, you know, kind of broke form and layered over itself? I don't think so. That's not what I'm going for this time around. Hey, doggies. So I'm going to keep coiling, press it down, yeah and I think I'm just going to, not entirely certain how I'm going to bind these two pieces together. cinch that down. Sorry, I didn't mean to go off camera. <laughs> Just rather than disrupt those nice two little pieces, I think I am going to put just a little coil here on the back. So again, I'm going to just tuck between our wire and our shell, if I can. Sometimes it's easier said than done, for sure. There it goes. And I'm going to grab that tail with our bent nose pliers. Because they can get where my fingers cannot. I'm going to bring that around, cinch it down tight, and just do a bit more coiling. Coil, coil, coil. There we are. Push it down. Tuck that tail. And now I'm going to snip this wire. Just a few millimeters past where we finished coiling. And use my round nose pliers to make a nice tight little spiral here on the back side. And there we go. And so now we have our very own wire wrapped shell that I googled it. I'm not entirely sure what species of auger shell this is. But it is, in fact, an auger shell. So, yay! Um, it's a type of snail, I believe. I don't know. Someone more knowledgeable than me, please tell me. Because I can only Google so much. But, yeah. It's... There we are. I'm very pleased with that. Just the front. And there's the back. Hey! 
Hey y'all, thanks so much for joining me for this tutorial. I hope that it was helpful to you. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or ideas, uh, please leave them in the comment area down below. Um, also, if you follow along with this tutorial, or any of my tutorials really, and want to share pictures of what you have made, or um, uh, tag me on Instagram or anything like that. Uh, we have Facebook and Instagram. Links are down below in the video description box. And then also, if you enjoy my free daily tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, as well as participate in my fairy house giveaways, my monthly craft crates, and all the different things that we do here, um, please check me out on Patreon. Every little bit goes so far, so I really appreciate everybody who pledges a dollar and, you know, everybody who pledges more than that, too. I mean, it's, and even just liking, sharing, subscribing, um, all that stuff really goes a long way in helping us to accomplish what we're working for here with our artisan education efforts and different things at Back to Earth Creations. So thank you guys so much for all of your support and um, all of your encouragement and all of your craftiness. Keep being awesome, you guys. Y'all inspire me. Every time I'm like, hey, let's do this, and y'all are like, yeah, and, and then we make stuff, and y'all do so good. I'm such a proud teacher, so thank you guys, and uh, we'll see you all around. Mwah. Happy crafting. Bye. <laughs>